hi guys welcome back to my channel thank you for following me thank you for subscribing on my channel uh, today i will be looking at this question paper that was written on 11 of september 2020 as we are preparing for our examination but my focus will be on question four where you were required to do contracts statement so uh, you are given this information of two contracts that were in operation, which is contract rows and contract bud. Uh, I selected this question paper because I want us to learn how do we calculate a profit if the contract is completed, or how do we calculate a profit if the contract is not yet completed. So contract rows was completed and contract bud was not yet completed. So if you scroll down, you will see that uh, you are given the layout that you must put on your Excel in order to calculate your contract uh, or your profit on this contract. So you need to put this on your spreadsheet. And then to scroll further, this question was out of 33 marks. So just to recap on the terminology that is used on contract, I'll go to my, uh, to my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, what is a contract? A contract is a long-term project which normally takes more than a year to complete. For example, the construction of a dam, bridge, road blocks, or a block of flats. A, a, a block of flats. And then a subcontractor uh, is a company or a person whom a main contractor hires to perform a specific task is part of an overall project or normally pays uh, and normally pays for the services provided by this subcontractor they will come maybe to, to do plumbing or electrical work then you need to learn about contract costs you need to understand them what are they they are the costs incurred to date on the specific contract e.g the material that was used on the contract the labor expenses, depreciation on machinery, the cost of moving to or from the sites, just to name the few. So those are the contract costs. Then you need to understand what is a contract price. A contract price is a price in which a contractee agrees, in which a contractor and a contractee agrees upon before signing the contract. And then we have a certified work, which is the work that is completed and certified by the engineer or architect. We also have the uncertified work, which is the work which is completed, but not yet certified by the engineer or architect. So you also need to understand what is extra work on the contract. Extra work on the contract is something that was not included in the contract which is done in addition to the requirement of the contract. So this amount is a, a, a work, an extra work, which will be added on the contract price. Then lastly, we'll be looking at this few terms, retention money. What is it? Is the money that the contracting party can hold back for a specific period, for a period after the completion of the contract to protect them against defects. Then the latter defect is a material defect which was not visible after a reasonable inspection. The material imperfection must have existed when the parties entered into the contract. Then we have a provision for latent and defects, which is the, the contractor does not take all the profits of the contract into account, but keeps some of the uh, for possible defects, which the contractor will be liable to pay for. Then lastly, we have attributable profit, which is a portion of profit that can be safely taken to the profit and loss for the current year without incurring the risk. So what you can do, you can take pictures or screenshots of the terms that I've defined here just to learn them. And then you'll be able to understand uh, what, are the, what is co contract costing and then you'll be able to follow me in what I'll be doing in Excel. Just to go back uh, uh, on the question paper, remember, you're supposed to, to type in the layout where you're going to be completing your information. 
uh, and I've already typed mine. So this is the contract uh, which I've typed uh, already, the contract statement which I've typed already. So it's a contract call statement for the year ended 30 April 2020. As I've said, we have contract rows and then we have contract but, and then I've typed in all the information that was given on the question paper. So I didn't add anything extra. I just typed what was given on the question paper on page 14. So I'm going to start uh, to calculate my contract uh, or the net profit of my contract. So the first thing that I must do, I must calculate how much is the material that was used on this contract. So if you check on the information on page 13, you will see that there was the material that was bought for 590. So it means I must start my calculation here. So I'm going to say equals to 590,000, which was the material that was bought. And then I'll check also down, down there. They say there was unused material transferred from contract rows to contract part. So it means I must subtract that a material that was moved from this contract. So which is 55,000. Then if I go down as well, I see that there was also the faulty material. So I must also subtract that material. It means it was returned to the supplier. And then you'll see that a material on hand is zero. So it means my calculation is going to end here. Then I press enter. Then it tells me the material that was used in this contract was 520,000. Now I'm going to calculate for contract part. The material that was used for contract part, there was material that was both. I'm, I'm going to start my calculation again, equals to 123,000, the material that was bought. And then if I go down, I see that there was that 50,000 of material that was moved from contract rows to contract part. It means I must add that 55,000. And then if I go down, I see that there is also material that was returned. So I must subtract 2,340. Then if I check again, then there was also a material on hand. It means this is a material that was not used. So that is a minus 18,000. So this is how I'll calculate the material for contract part. Then I press enter. Then it tells me that the material that was used for contract part is 157,606. Now I'm going to the next contract cost, which is direct wages. Direct wages uh, that were paid. Uh, for contract uh, rows is 460,000. Then for contract part is 58,000. So I'm going to put it like that. Then there were also direct overheads. Direct overheads, uh, uh, I'm told there is 240,000. And then for Contract part is 32,000. Okay. Uh, what else? Subcontractors. Subcontractors is part of our contract cost. Uh, how much was paid uh, for contract rows is 28,000. And then for contract part is 4,300. Uh, depreciation. For depreciation, you can be given a percentage to calculate your depreciation, or sometimes they can give you the opening balance of your depreciate or of your machinery as well as the closing balance of the machinery. So you need to subtract the, the, the opening balance uh, from the closing balance, then you'll get the, the difference there will be your depreciation. But in this case, you were given machinery on one May, which is the opening balance. So I'm going to start and say equals to 460,000. And then that's the opening balance. And then we're also giving the closing balance of machinery. So it's minus 210,000. So the difference between the two will give you, will give you the, let me check again. Uh, how much? Oh, sorry, 650,000. I'm taking the wrong amount today. 650,000 minus 210,000. So it gives us, 440,000. So that is your machinery. So under contract part, you'll do the same thing equals to 126,000. 
minus a machinery on hand is 52,000. So this gives us 74,000. So now we've calculated all the, the cost that were involved in this contract. It's time to calculate the totals of our, of our net contract cost. So I can highlight both of these uh, cells because that is where I want to see the results. Then I can just use this feature, which is called AutoSum. When I click on it, it will just give me all the totals, as you can see. It was just one click on the AutoSum, and then all my totals were there. Let me repeat. I want to see the totals here, so I highlight both of the cells. Then I click on AutoSum. So it will just give me the totals that I need. So now we continue with the contract price. I mean, to, to finalize our statement, we need a contract price. So a contract price was 1720,000. Oh, sorry, 1,720,000. And then if you check on this contract, this contract was completed. So it means we should not put a certified work. We should also not put an uncertified work, but we can put what? Extra. So the extras were 108, 108,000. So these are the two. So you are not going to put anything there as well as there because of what? The contract was completed. Okay. And then with the contract bad, you will see that uh, the contract was not completed. So it means with this one, we must put the certified work, which is 374,000, as well as 84,000, uncertified work. So we add these two. So it means in this case, we are not going to put anything under cost price, and we are not going to put anything under extras, although they, they were mentioned there. But we are not going to put them because the contract was not completed. Okay. so. I'm going to calculate now the total contract value. So I can use auto sum. I can click where I want to see the results. Use auto sum. Then I can tell or uh, tell the computer the range that I want uh, it to add. So which is from this range. Then I press enter. It will tell me that the total contract value is 1.8 million uh, 28,000. So I don't want to repeat the same process here. It means I can use autofill to copy the formula on the other side. So it's going to give me the results also of the uh, total contract value of contract part. Now it's time to calculate the net profit. What is the net profit? The net profit is the equals to total contract value minus net contract cost. So I'm going to say equals to total contract value minus the net contract cost okay it tells me that i've made a profit of 140 so again i don't want to repeat the same uh, formula i'm gonna use autofill because i need also uh, to calculate the net profit on the other side so if you read further on this question they tell you that 15 percent of the profits on all contracts must be treated as provision Remember the provision for latent and defense where the, the contractor, uh, the contractee must protect himself by withholding a certain part of the profit so that if there are defects on the, on the contract, uh, they, they can use that amount to pay. So the remainder, the remainder of the profits on all contracts must be transferred to the profit and loss. So we need to, pro, uh, to make a provision of 15%. So we're going to say equals to profit multiply by 15 percent because we need to retain that then you get uh, the provision of 210 again i don't want to repeat the formula i can use autofill because it's the same formula that i must use on this other side then i will now calculate the profits and loss that i can uh, take to the profits and loss account so it's going to be equal to the net profit minus the provision then it gives him it gives me 119,000. Then I can also do the same on the other side, which gives me 
1,234. So if this is the case, it means I'm, I've completed uh, to calculate my my contract uh, my contract uh, profit. So I will need to go further and, uh, uh, and and read the instructions of what is it that I need to do in order to score all the 33 marks. If you look at 4.1.1, it says use the following example as, uh, exactly as shown uh, to draw up the contract costing for two contracts in the books of Movango Builders, which is this. And then it says insert your examination number as a left header and print out 10 as a right header. Okay, if you continue there, you'll see that you need to insert your header and footer. Depending on the version that you are using for Excel, uh, some version you can go to insert, you'll see on your ribbon, ribbon heading a, 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 a header or footer. Uh, with this one, mine, you have a header there and a footer, but I need to go to the header. The header it would be this one. So I can just go in there to the header to customize it. They say it must be examination number on your left. So I can put my examination number there, which will be your ID in the exam. And then on your right, you have to put in print out 10. So I'm going to type it is in capital letters. So I'm going to type it in, let in capital letters and give it a space, print out 10 exactly as how they wanted it in the question paper. And then they also say you must uh, insert horizontal line and vertical line exactly as shown so that you can score that mark. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to go into the ribbon and select the borders. Here I'm going to select a, a draw border because I want to make sure that my lines are exactly as shown uh, on the question paper. So I'm going to um, so it didn't go in well. So I'm going to undo and draw it again nicely. So the first part will be to draw a box around it. And then the second part will be to draw these two columns. And then I will have put to put a border also here under the, the heading contract rows and contract part. And then I need to also put lines here for my next contract costing. And then I also have to put lines here for my total contract value. So this is how they want it. So your lines must be exactly as shown. They say also display all amount as integers with no currency. No currency. So integers with no currency. Let me highlight all my numbers. Then to a num number group, I can go in there. And then select number. And then it must have no currency so and no integers. So I can put it as a reduce the decimal to zero there. So it will still look like the same because it is all amount as integers with no currency sign. And then I must save this document file, save as uh, browse where I want to save. Under my document, I'll save this file as contract. Okay. And then I'll print the same. You must print a contract statement in one page portrait. So you must also take note of that. It must be one page portrait, not landscape. So I'm going to go to file, print. So this is how it's going to appear. When it's printed remember you don't have to put this yellow or the, the shading i was putting the shading so that you can understand what i was trying to teach you today so this is the end of this question which was 33 marks for contract statement uh, i hope you have learned one or few things uh, if these videos are helping you please like the videos 
and subscribe so that you can receive the notification uh, for the new content that I'll be posting on this channel. Thank you.